Well, at last it's out. The first yoke and throttle quadrant for flight simulation that is PC and Xbox compatible. It's the Velocity One flight controls from Turtle Beach. Today we'll be covering both the Xbox and PC versions. Designed and configured for use with Microsoft Flight Simulator. But it uses the standard peripheral interfaces, so it's usable with almost any sim. And in this, the first of a number of videos I'll be doing covering this product, we'll look at what you get, getting started, and also my opinions and views. A warm welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, and let's get started. I got my product direct from Turtle Beach in the UK, and the cost is £349.99p. The yoke is made of rigid, durable plastic. Looks good with lots of buttons and switches, which we'll cover later. The circular extension on the right-hand side is to accommodate the throttle quadrant. And next to that are the USB-C connector ports. One to connect to the throttle quadrant and one to connect to the Xbox or PC. The top of the yoke has an easy removable lid and stored inside is an Allen key which you use for the clamps. This is the best fixing system I've seen on a yoke and we'll look at that in more detail shortly. Full clamp extension is a little over 60mm or about 2.5 inches. The throttle quadrant comes with two sets of power levers. Those on top for multi-engine or jet and also uniquely it includes the linear or vernier controls for throttle, prop and mixture. Includes 10 configurable buttons and easy access to the trim wheel. The throttle quadrant attaches just clips into the yoke with the release button on the back if you want to take it off again. It's a snug and sturdy fit as you'd want it to be and click it's in place. Plugging in the yoke and throttle quadrant couldn't be easier and Turtle Beach have made it easier by color coding the various ports. The blue cable is to connect the yoke to the throttle quadrant and it's about a meter long. The throttle quadrant is clearly designed to be used and attached to the yoke, but it doesn't have to be that way. It can be detached and used separately, and that's the reason for the longer cable. You have the option for both the yoke and the throttle quadrant to use sticky pads to secure it to the surface if you want to. The throttle quadrant must be connected to the yoke in order to operate. It will not operate independently. The main cable, which is about 2 meters long, USB-C into the throttle and a USB connector on the other end for the PC or the Xbox. There's an audio headset port on the left hand side and for Xbox users you do need to use an Xbox compatible headset. For PC users you do need to configure this in the device manager and your sound settings accordingly. To do this is straightforward, go to your control panel and choose devices and printers. The Velocity 1 flight control will show up as a game controller. Right click on the icon and right at the top is sound settings. Choose that. Now it's just a simple matter of enabling it or setting it as default device etc. in order to use sound via the input port. The unit comes with a set of GA lever handles for the top power levers. Caution when changing them, they are very tight. I recommend hold the actual lever stem in one hand and pull the top off with the other. This configuration is throttle, prop, mixture and flap. The yoke has full range of movement, 180 degrees and a good amount of movement forward and aft for your pitch. Resistance is via springs and it has a very clearly defined center. This unit uses Hall Effect sensors for the pitch and potentiometers for the roll, rudder and the power levers. It uses the contactless optical encoder for fine adjustments for the trim wheel. The unit has status indicator lights on the face of the main body and these light up as well as a number of decals to place over the face of the lights. Pending an update from the developer, please note these are not configurable or active at this time. With the unit you also get a few small screws for cockpit mounting and additional details can be gained from the Turtle Beach Simulation Discord. I'll leave links in the notes below. In addition to the standard Xbox buttons on the yoke, you also get a 4-way hat switch, an 8-way POV, as well as a button on each grip. On the back of the yoke handle you also have left and right triggers which are used for rudders, as well as the obligatory left and right buttons. So plenty of choice here. 
You don't get much in the way of documentation, but you don't really need it with this unit. There are a number of pre-printed labels available for use on the decals or faceplates for the status indicator panel, a quick start guide, and a fold-out poster which gives you all the relevant information, including all the various button pre-assignments for PC and Xbox. To help you assess the actual size of the unit, I've included a few comparative pictures against other yokes and throttle quadrants that I have. This is the Honeycomb yoke, then the Velocity one, and the ProFlight Satec Cessna yoke. This is the Velocity one in comparison to the Satec Stroke Logitech yoke and throttle. A size comparison for the throttle quadrant, and this is a trim wheel comparison. First order of the day is clamp the unit to the desk with its inbuilt innovative clamping system. The unit has good depth and a short tail making it suitable for most desk types. Tighten it till it's firm but resist the temptation to over tighten. Replace the Allen key and you're done. Plug the unit into a USB port and the unit comes alive. As you can see on the FMD or flight management display on the front panel. The colour and brightness of the lights can be adjusted. I've just dimmed my lights just to show it off a little bit better. But you'll have to excuse my rather dodgy camera skills. The home screen shows what profile you're on, what input mode, Xbox or PC, and what firmware version you're using. To access submenus, press either the up or down key. The various key choices are fairly straightforward and you'll soon get the hang of it. And the first item is input mode. Default is PC and you change it to Xbox here. Hit the arrow key and then select. The system will then shut down and restart in your selected mode. So switching between PC and Xbox is fairly straightforward. Let's go back to our menus and this time we're going to choose profile. And the unit has three profiles set up as default. Default, single engine prop and twin engine jet. And these three profiles are also default profiles that can't be overwritten in Microsoft Flight Simulator. These three profiles cannot be configured or changed in any way on the FMD. And changing profile here has no impact in Microsoft Flight Simulator or any other sim. They're included here for one purpose only, and that is for the third item on our list, training. So using the down arrow, I will highlight training and then press select. Now you can press any button or axis and see what action it is configured to in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Different profiles have different assignments. So in summary, the profiles and the training is only so that you can see what actions are configured to what buttons and axes. It's a useful tool, especially if you're just starting out. The chronometer is for setting the time, but let's go into settings. And here we can change the LED color, brightness, the status panel mode, and so on. The one you do need to know about is number 7, firmware update. We select that, and here we can put it into update mode. And download any new firmware from the developer as and when it's available. You'll need to do this from time to time. Let's have a look how to do it. From your PC desktop or your Xbox home screen, access the Windows Store. Under the search function, type in Turtle Beach. And we're looking for Turtle Beach Control Center. It's a free app. Hit the Get tab and then go ahead and install. It's only a small program. It doesn't take long. Once installed on the Xbox, it'll show as one of your apps. And on the PC, you can access it via the Start menu. Or, of course, you can just launch from here. Now let's start up the control center. Future firmware updates will activate the status indicator panel lights and perhaps new profiles. From the control center, select Velocity 1 Flight. Once that's done, follow the on-screen prompts and it will take you to your settings and your update mode, exactly as we did previously. And once you're there, hit the select key and this will take you into the update mode. The panel will shut down briefly and it will then start to search for updates. At the time of recording, 23rd of November, the current version is 1.04. Once you've done, hit the Home and then you can exit the application. You're done, you've got the latest firmware version. Following the firmware update, unplug the item and plug it back in. And your current firmware version is indicated on the front panel.
And that's it, our initial setup is complete and we're ready to go flying. For my test today, I'm at Alpha Kilo 50 Sky Ranch in Alaska, and I'm in Just Flight's Piper Arrow 3. This is on the PC and we'll be doing a test for the Xbox a little later on, using the same aircraft but from Carinado. And we're going to give the controls a quick test, make sure they're working as they should. But first, let's just go to the control options. This is on the PC, and the flight control is shown as two different items yoke and throttle or quad. There we can see the three default profiles. Default, single engine and twin engine jet. The graphic display for each controller is somewhat deceptive. For configuration purposes you can only configure the yoke under the yoke, controller settings and the, all the axis and buttons on the quad under the quad setting. Here's one anomaly you should be aware of, as some users have been saying that the throttle resets when exiting and entering into the menus. This is because we've got two axes set up for throttle 1. I'll provide a solution to this when I do my follow-up configuration video. Today we're using the single engine prop profile. For the Xbox, under the control options menu, it's slightly different. The Velocity 1 flight control is shown as one unit, and is configured as such. Bindings are more or less the same, although there are some variances. And once again, we've got the three default profiles. Default, single engine, and twin engine jet. For my Xbox test again, I'll be using this single engine profile. The default profile for both PC and Xbox is not really usable as lots of items are missing, but it'll be a good building block for creating your own configurations. And as mentioned before, I'll cover that in an upcoming video in detail. Let's get back to testing our controllers on the ground, make sure everything's working, and first of all the elevators. Pushing the yoke in and out, I have a good amount of travel, it seems to be responding well, and now the ailerons. To make the aircraft roll or bank, that seems to be working fine. Let's now give that throttle a test and push it all the way in. That's responding as expected. Not a lot of resistance on the vernier controls, but there's enough. Now using my trigger keys to test the rudders. Left and right. I won't be using my rudder pedals today. And the bumper buttons above the triggers are the differential brakes. And now based on the profile, I can use this axis to test the flaps. That's two stages down, all the way down, and now we'll put them all the way back up again. That looks good. Let's jump back into the cockpit and try it out in here. As before, first of all the pitch, yoke forward and backwards. I have a fairly good range of movement and now the roll left and right. And as you can see, my movement is not one to one with the aircraft. There's obviously a fair amount of sensitivity being built in. I'm not going to change that for now. I'm going to leave everything at default, but it's nothing we can't sort out in sensitivities when we do our configuration guide. Mixture's working fine. Now for the prop. Yep, that all looks good. Now let's give that throttle another test. That's working as expected. Now an internal test on the flaps. One, two and three. I must say I'm surprised how little resistance there is on the top levers. They're looser than what I would have expected them to be. The worry, of course, is they get looser over time with use. Let's now test this trim wheel. Now, conversely, there's great resistance on the trim wheel, and it moves really, really nicely. I like it a lot. Movement seems almost one-to-one. -one. That's great. Let's now just test some of the buttons. The right POV gives me the quick views. Let's now try the left POV. And this gives me free look, so I can look around the cockpit. That works great. The button on top of the right yoke handle resets view. The proof of the pudding is in the eating, as they say. So, brakes off. I'm just going to apply a little bit of throttle, and I'm going to test my rudders and brakes before attempting a takeoff. These trigger rudders are pressure sensitive, so I'm just applying a small squeeze and now a more dramatic one, and that's reacting very well indeed. Now I'm going to try my differential braking right, 
and now left. Continue to roll and I'm going to press both and see if I come to a stop. Once again that's worked very well. Let's get going. Throttle full. I'm going to apply small amounts of rudder as I head down the runway to compensate for the torque. Looking for about 65 knots then I'm going to rotate. I've chosen a narrow runway deliberately. Gear up. Now I'm just going to let her climb a little bit. I do love this arrow, it's so well behaved. Flaps up now, and that's all working as expected. So far, so good. And so I don't overstress the engine and come back on the prop lever, and I'm going to tap off a little bit on the throttle and then start leveling out. And I'll use my trim wheel for that to give me a small, gentle climb. The trim wheel's not oversensitive and it was quite quick and easy to trim the plane into level flight. So we're up, we're relatively low, but we're cruising and it's time to give this yoke a bit of a test. It's around midday, but already the Alaskan sun is starting to set. Yoke movements are super smooth on large movements, but they are sticky on the smaller movements, on the pitch axis. Roll axis is super smooth, but when pushing the yoke forward or back in small increments, I'm finding it sticky. And by sticky, I mean it tending to hold a little bit and then release, making tiny corrections quite difficult to do. I gotta be honest here, I find this a little bit disappointing. In my opinion, on the roll axis, they've reduced the sensitivity just a little bit too much, but within the control options, that's easily corrected. I've done a number of flights with this yoke over the past two days or so, of which today you're only seeing a small extract. And I've noticed on the pitch movement, the stickiness is very apparent when you rest your hands on the yoke as you would normally do. The more pressure you apply, the more difficult it is to get those small movements. Apply a light touch and it is not as pronounced. Time to test the rudder input. First of all, left rudder. That's fine, and now let me do the right rudder input. There we go, that's all good. via the Turtle Beach simulation Discord. I see Turtle Beach have acknowledged the stickiness of the yoke on the pitch axis. They say it's because the product is brand new and that with use over a couple of weeks that stickiness will ease off as the bushes bear in. Well I certainly hope that's the case, time will tell. Welcome to the Xbox. We're in flight just about where we left off with the PC and I'm just testing left and right rudders. And the handling just seems as good. We're in the Carinado Piper Arrow 3. This time we're not using the linear controls, we're using the top levers. Just testing everything's alright, gear down, now flaps fully down. That all seems to be working nicely. And as mentioned earlier, I'm in the single engine profile. I've got my airport markers on so we can find somewhere to land. The handling and responsiveness on the Xbox is the same as it is on the PC. I'm using the Xbox Series X and performance is excellent. And unsurprisingly the stickiness on the pitch axis is still very much evident. But other than that so far, well it's performing beautifully. I'm using the uppermost levers in the Caronado and I am surprised at how little resistance there is to the movement of the lever. They're not so loose that they will fall, they do hold their position, but what will they be like after a couple of months use? Once again, time will tell. Let me be clear, they're not terrible, but there is very little resistance. It'd be quite easy to move one lever accidentally when adjusting another. Turtle Beach could easily correct this with a small rubber insert that fitted over the lever and into the slot and creating a little bit more friction for the lever. Well, that'd be my recommendation anyway. The movement of the levers, however, is very smooth indeed. The Satec ones tend to be a little bit coarse. These are not. They're quite sensitive and the throttle reacts immediately to small inputs. Well, I've chosen the runway. It's dead ahead and that's where we're going to land. And this is where we'll see how good, bad or ugly 
is that pitch axis, as on a landing I'm going to need lots of fine small movements to get my landing right. Coming up on 110 knots and flaps fall down, gear is down. I'm coming in a little bit hot but that's deliberate so I can test the controls. Can need a little bit more throttle as the arrow loses speed very very quickly indeed with all its gear and flaps deployed. And again for the sake of fairness and clarity the stickiness of the yoke whilst disappointing is not dramatic. It's not a deal breaker for me. It's just that I expected something better. And let's hope with a bit of use that it wears in and that this goes away. During the landing keep your eye on the yoke in the insert. I think this highlights my point. I'm happy with that landing and now pressing both bumper buttons for my brakes. And I'm slowing to a stop on this gravel runway. And that completes what I think you'll agree is a fairly comprehensive review of the Velocity 1 flight control, recently released by Turtle Beach. Just a note at this point, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, as I'll be bringing some detailed configuration guides for the Velocity 1 flight out fairly soon. Still to be confirmed, but I'll do one for the props and one for the airliners and business jets. So now to the bottom line. What do I really think about this product? Let's start with what I like about it. And first and foremost, I like that it's an all-in-one design. There's everything here that you need to get you up and away. Overall, well designed to fit on your desktop. And it comes with a literal stack of axes and buttons to allow you to configure away to your heart's content. The status indicator panel, well, it's not implemented yet, so I really can't comment. But once it's up and functional, it'll be a great addition. The trim wheel itself, well, it's probably the best trim wheel I've used out of any controller. And I like the fact that it comes with enough lever tops to allow for GA and airliner flight. The desktop clamping system, quite frankly, is inspired. And Turtle Beach have said that through firmware updates, far more functionality and options will be added in the future. Something to look forward to. And of course, for me, it's both Xbox and PC compatible. That's a win-win. In terms of overall functionality, well, it does exactly what it says on the tin. And it delivers. And now to what I don't like about this unit. Well, as you've probably gathered by now, I'm not very happy with the pitch axis because it's sticky. If this will bed down and go away over the next few weeks, well, all well and good. It's not a deal breaker, but it is annoying. I'd also like to see more resistance on the top four levers of the throttle quadrant. I'm not so much concerned about now, but what will they be like after a couple of weeks, months use? Would they become sloppy and not hold their position? And for me, this is probably the biggest negative overall. But as I've said before, time will tell. And the last point I want to raise is not really a negative, but more of a concern. The white handles that fit on the four levers on the top of the throttle quadrant are very tight indeed. And a reminder, hold the stem while you're changing tops. But they're so tight, I think it would be easy to damage the actual lever action itself. I'm not going to compare the product to the honeycomb yoke and throttle quadrant. They're different products aimed at a different market segment in terms of flight simulation. What I can compare it to is the Logitech stroke Satec product. And for me, well, the Velocity 1 flight wins hands down in terms of versatility and functionality. Well, I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourselves and bye for now.